As Edna just mentioned, my name is Hector Valenzuela. I'm a professor of biology here at Whittier College. And I am also the pre-health advisor. Um, I also help students get into right to school, not just pre-health programs. Um, and I teach immunology, I teach microbiology, I teach, um, I've taught in the past anatomy and physiology as well. Um, and I also um, have developed my own set of courses that involve the studies in biology of aging. So um, early well-rounded, um, and I am also involved with uh, making sure that students get into their pre-health programs of choice. Excellent, thank you, thank you for that. So we'll dive right in, I, you know, we'll have some questions. We have some questions prepared, but at any point, if anybody um, in the audience wants to raise their hand and ask a question, we would love that. Um, if you prefer to drop your question in the chat, you can do that as well. Um, we'll dive right in. Um, Professor Valenzuela, can you walk us through basically what is pre-med, what is pre-health? And is it available at Whittier College as an actual official major? Okay, um, so I often get this question as into what, what the heck is pre-health, right? So um, all I have to say about this is the following, that there is no such thing as a major that is pre-health in terms of, you know, this is a class that, that has a certain type of curricula that you need to follow. Basically, what pre-health major means is that you declare your major, let's say biology, chemistry, English, history, it would be whatever you want it to be. And then you go into and, um, and you fulfill all the requirements that the pre-health programs. So you get your degree, your bachelor's of science, your bachelor's of arts degree, and then you apply to the pre-health programs afterwards. As long as you meet the requirements for those pre-health programs, let's say that you're interested in going to uh, medical school or nursing school or PT schools, all those programs have their own requirements, set requirements. So, um, you know, for example, if you're gonna be starting nursing school, PT or biology, uh, excuse me, medical school, they all require chemistry. They all require a certain number of biology courses as well. So you can be an English major and then take those classes that are required for those pre-health programs and you are considered a pre-health major. So as long as you fulfill the requirements for the schools, you can go in and get accepted to those schools. And you will also have to take acceptance exams, you know, entrance exams, excuse me, you're gonna have to take, uh, you know, fulfill a lot of other requirements like extracurricular activities, uh, shadowing programs and so on and so forth. So really um, when we say you are a pre-health major, um, it's you major in whatever's interesting to you. As long as you fulfill those additional requirements, you will be accepted into those programs. Great, thank you for that. Um, do students need to apply for the pre-health or pre-med track? Excuse me, can you say that again? I, oh, I, didn't, do, I broke up. Do, do students need to apply to be a pre-health or pre, to, to join the pre-health track? Uh, that's a great question. So unlike other large schools, you know, like some of the Cal States that have their nursing program um, it's a, as a separate entity, um, or even some uh, you know, biology programs that, that are so impacted that you need to petition to actually get in. Um, Whittier is not like that. So you get accepted to Whittier, you can major in anything that you want. Once you're here, you can decide which major you wanna be. You can be a biochemistry major, you can be a biology major, uh, kinesiology major, um, it's whatever you want. So there is no mechanism as in, to get into these biology majors. Um, and that's one of the advantages of, of being in a small liberal arts college, right? So um, you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one interactions and you get to choose whichever major you want at whichever point, okay? So we usually recommend students to declare the major at the very latest at the end of their sophomore year to make it official, but you can switch your mind at any moment, right? Um, it's really entirely up to you. And there is no um, additional hurdles that you have to take or make um, to get into these uh, other uh, majors. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, and so none of the majors at Whittier are impacted, correct? There's an applicant or a student won't have any trouble declaring a major in biology or, or in the pre-health track. There's room for, for everybody? 
that is correct. Yes, uh, we have plenty of room for everyone. So that that's never been an issue with us. Um, even when we've had a lot of interest in in you know in in our introductory courses because we fulfill all the requirements, say for kinesiology or or, or biochemistry and biology at the same time, um, we've always been able to open more sections when that does happen. So it's never been an, uh, a problem with us. Walk us, tell us uh, what four years as a pre-health uh, student look at, at, at Whittier, look okay. like for a student at Whittier. Okay, so um, I'll focus primarily in biology because that is mostly my department, um, but it, it really starts off with exactly the same. So um, let's say that you're, for example, you're interested in going into PT school or nursing school or or even medical school, right? Like I said, um, the basic core requirements of the sciences for any one of those pre-health majors always starts the same way. Um, it always surprises students to find out how much chemistry you have to take. And I'm sorry for those of you who said like, oh no, I don't like chemistry that much. And I want to go into biology for a reason or kinesiology for a reason. Um, unfortunately, it is it is a requirement. Um, you have to take at least one year of chemistry um, for a lot of these majors. Um, you know, nursing um, requires at least one year um, and it's recommended to take uh, one semester of organic chemistry as well. Um, and you know, if you're going to go to medical school, you're going to be taking additional years of chemistry, three years of chemistry um, for the most part. So yes, unfortunately, um, that is the case. And our requirements in the way that we set it up is that um, when you first start at Whittier, you're going to be meeting with us one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm one of the pre-health advisors, but there's other pre-health advisors in our campus. Um, and each one of us specializes in helping students in different fields. Uh, for example, we have a professor in the kinesiology department who primarily helps students get into the nursing program, but we all contribute um, and help each other, um, depending on how many students are coming and approaching us. But um, so students um, are all going to start off with the basic background you know, in the sciences and the STEM. So regardless if you're going to be majoring whichever major, history, English, um, if you are interested in pre-health, everybody has to take those initial year of chemistry. Everybody's going to have to take then um, additional biology courses. And then we, we, we meet and we plan out what you're going to be doing, when you're going to be doing, in which semesters you're going to be doing. So I will meet with a student on day one, the semester when it starts, and I will talk about um, how comfortable they are about taking multiple science courses, because I, I want to make sure that you're successful. So I will, um, you know, ask you a series of questions to find out, um, can you handle chemistry, biology, and calculus at the same, in the same semester, you know, and then, um, and then from there gauge how we can plan and be very strategic about um, approaching your, your, setting your schedule. Awesome. So, so, so give us some, some clear um, instructions. We have some admitted students uh, in oh, okay, the audience great. today. So let's so let's say they come for their first for, for their registration. They come to pick their classes and they're they've decided they want to be on the pre-health okay. track. Should they tell their advisor at that point? Should they make an appointment with you? What are the steps they need to follow to make sure they're on the right track immediately? Okay. Um first I encourage everybody to meet with me or Dr. Link which is another pre-health advisor in the biology department. And we will sit down and we will literally plan out your entire uh, four years here, when you should be taking which classes and when you should be applying for MCATs, when you should be doing everything. So I, that's the first thing is meet with us one-on-one -on -one and we will look at your transcripts. We're gonna look at everything and then together and then we're gonna plan it all out. Okay, so that's the first step that I would do. Second step is that it, when you first come to Whittier, for those of you who have been accepted already, you get assigned uh, an advisor. So this advisor is going to help you um, with uh, selecting your courses. But let me um, make it clear that a, a lot of you guys um, have to take an entrance exam, a math entrance exam. And my strong recommendation is not to take that math entrance exam very lightly. Because um, based on your scores of that math class is going to determine at which level of chemistry um, or if you can even take chemistry, you know, so um, 
chemistry is a math-based class. The, the general um, chemistry is strictly math. So um, you have to have a score at a certain level before you're allowed to take chemistry. You can be taking the required math that fulfills the requirement to be in chemistry simultaneously. But, um, but my recommendation is always, you know, take that test as seriously as possible. And, um, and it's not very complicated, but, but you need to have a certain score before you're allowed to take and enroll into chemistry. So that's, the, um, so when you, and, and here's the other thing, you know, I keep talking about chemistry, even though I'm a biology major, right? <laughs> um, it, it's very fundamental because if you are interested um, in going to medical school, but, may, or maybe you're going, interested in going to nursing, um, you know, if you start with the chemistry early enough, you have options of switching a pre-health degree. So you can start off with medical school and then say, oh, wait, uh, I kind of changed my mind. I want to go to PT school. Um, if we start you with the chemistry right away, um, and it's a lot easier to make those transitions without losing any time. And, I, and when I meet with students, I will go over um, again, um, how to maximize their time and you know scheduling the classes and being able to maneuver whether taking a gap year or not taking a gap year before you apply to your pre-health uh, profession of choice or not. So my first advice then is meet with us. We'll discuss your schedule. My second advice is take the math placement test seriously. Um, and then um, and then based on that, we can determine whether it would be a good idea to take chemistry and or math or biology, one of those courses. So we have to like really play around with the, with the schedule at that point. Great, thank you, that's, that's solid advice. Okay, so um, to make the best choices for you, I would have to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and we would need to, I would need to look at your transcripts to see um, what courses you've already taken that will fulfill because you can double dip in terms of classes that you've taken in the past as a transfer student um, so that you don't have to take them again here at Whittier. Um, and then the other thing that I would need to know is like what science courses have you taken? You know, have you taken chemistry? You know, have you taken what level of math have you taken? Um, so medical schools have, a, every medical school has their own set of requirements. What we aim to do is fulfill the requirements, say representing like 90% of the, all the medical schools programs here at um, in the United States. So um, every, you know, a lot of schools have, like I said, different requirements, and some of them are very vague in, in terms of what they require. For example, if you look at the website for UCLA or, or some of the UC, I think it's UC Berkeley, they, they barely say anything. They say recommended, or they don't say anything in terms of, of um, you know, strict courses that are required. So through the years, we've been collecting a lot of information as into what they recommend, and we've made a list. So when I meet with you, I can go over um, what schools are you interested in applying to, and or uh, we, we also want to make sure that I'm preparing you for the MCAT, you know, so the entrance exam for medical school. So if you like afterwards, I can give you my information and we can maybe meet through Zoom and then I can give you, because I, I really need to look at your, your, your transcripts to get a better idea of where you should be going, uh, you know, doing next. Thank you for that question. Um, we have a question in the chat. What is the class size for bio, chem and math? I kept having these visions of like movies, right? With the big lecture halls and people <laughs> falling asleep with the boring chemistry professor at the front. Does that happen at Whittier, Professor Valenzuela? Uh, no. Um, so our classes, all of our classes are capped at 24. So no matter what, um, it's, it's all the STEM classes especially, because all the STEM classes have laboratories associated to them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the laboratories are designed to hold only 24 students. So even if we wanted to, we can't. We, we, what we end up doing when we do ex uh, reach that limit is, um, we open another section. Um, so for example, one of our most popular classes right now is probably anatomy and physiology. So we have two sections. Um, we have two sections for our introductory courses. Um, we have, you know, multiple two sections. So, so a student has four different introductory biology courses that they can choose from when they first start at Whittier. Um, so um, yes, um, it, it they're all capped at 24, so we have two, three, four, four introductory courses that are provided 
um, by you know each one of them having 24 students. So um, currently, none of them are completely filled. So we have, um, you know, last semester I taught two of those sections myself, and I think one held 17 students, another one held uh, 20, 22 students. So, um, and, and like I said, people can take those introductory courses out of sequence as well. So, um, so, you know, they can make it so that they can fit their schedule. So, no, we don't have that issues of, of very large, large classes. Professor, one of the times we you and you and I chatted, um, you mentioned something about the very small group you have um, for like senior projects. I think that you know once you're working with students in senior year, you cap it at like a really tiny number. Yes. So um, okay. So so in so if you're going to major in biology, um, and actually regardless of whatever you major in at Whittier College. Um, every student has to do a senior capstone project. And these projects are involved, you know, your, your, your advisor, your mentor, um, and then we are, and or in the classroom. So we usually cap um, how many students we have for senior uh, projects at four, you know. So there are some semesters when I'll have a little bit more, um, maybe six, seven, um, but, all of my interactions with the students are one-on-one. -on -one. There is no set class schedule for that. We meet actually in my office, we discuss their projects, and then we work together through their projects in the laboratories. So there's a lot of different ways of fulfilling the capstone projects, and I can go into more detail when the students get to that point. Um, but a lot of these are, are classes where the students really are interacting a, a lot, just one-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so, um, and this, and it has to be that way because uh, the research is very specific to that student, right? So everybody's doing their own projects and um, it has to be one-on-one. -on -one. So these are, um, you know, all students, regardless of whichever major you're in, have to do a senior project and everybody is gonna be interacting very intimately with their faculty members. Uh, you can work as in the groups as well. Some students choose to do, you know, a pair of students will work together in a specific project, but it's, just those two students and the faculty member. And um, so it's very, very close interactions. Very cool, very cool. Um, Professor, you you mentioned nursing school, right? And, and pre-nursing. We don't have a nursing program here, here at Whittier, but can you tell us what are the different types of nursing degrees out there? What can you study here at Whittier? And then what are the options beyond, right? Okay. Yes. So nursing is a is a tricky title um, because there's a, there's a lot of um, different degrees that you can get with a nursing that are entitled nursing. For example, you can get a certified nursing, um, which is a CNA, um, which is basically going straight from high school and you um, take a couple of classes and then you're ready to go in about two months. Then there's licensed pra practical or vocational nursing programs. Um, which is basically you go to a community college and it takes maybe about a year to complete all the coursework and then you go and work in the hospital as well. All usually these um, uh, types of nursing programs don't entail uh, a lot of responsibilities because of the, you know, because of the lack of the training, right? right. Um, and also um, don't really compensate very well salary wise, right? Then there's associate degree nursing, which would take two years at a community college as well. Um, and again, you know, a little bit more responsibility, but not as much. Then finally, there's a uh, bachelor's of science or bachelor's of art nursing, right? Um, usually it's a bachelor of science. And this is a degree in nursing. Um, and a lot of hospitals prefer this. And, um, and at, with this title, you will be able to work in the hospital. You're giving a lot more responsibilities. The salary is much better. Um, and, and, and people with this degree will most likely be overseeing the other uh, people with those other uh, vocational uh, nursing degrees, okay? And again, these are all referred to as nursing. So at Whittier, we, um, but these programs, that the catch about entering to these nursing programs um, is extremely, extremely challenging. Um, for example, um, this is one example where you have to apply directly to those nursing programs. Say, for example, you're applying to San Diego State, which has a nursing program. Um, 
and it's extremely impacted. You don't apply to the to the school itself. You apply directly to the nursing program. Um, so it's kind of like a separate entity altogether. Okay. Um, if you were to apply to directly to a school, you cannot just transfer into the nursing program. It, you, you're not, it's, it doesn't work that way. You have to apply directly to that program. And once you do apply, if you do get into the school, you're not allowed to transfer. It's forbidden. So you have the only way you can get in is if you get in straight into the nursing program. Now, the advantage of having a, a bi biology degree, for example, or a biochemistry degree, is, or um, or a public health degree, is that once you do get that degree, these programs, these nursing programs, have a, a system where they have an accelerated program where you, because you already have a degree and you apply to those programs, you go through the process that much faster, and it also increases your odds of getting accepted. So if you go, essentially you're competing with high school kids, right? You have a college mm -hmm. degree and a high school kid has a high school diploma. So who are they gonna take? They're gonna take the person with a college degree. So, um, so we've been very successful about getting students in that way um, because honestly, it is extremely competitive to get into a nursing program. Now, those are some options. Another option is getting a master's degree in nursing which we've had a lot of students do that. So they get a biology degree and then they apply directly to a master's degree uh, of nursing. Um, one case in point that from one student of ours um, a few years ago, she got into John Hopkins nursing program. So way out in the East Coast, um, a very good prestigious, prestigious um, school of nursing. And, um, and now is currently working here at UCLA. Uh, we've kept in touch. <laughs> So um, yeah, so so there's a lot of ways of, of approaching this, um, and um, and each one has its its you know its, its strengths and its weaknesses. If you just want to jump right in, you can get all of these um, lower um, you know I guess associate degrees or licensed practice or certified nursing um, very easily. But um, but we aim to help students get out of their master's degree or also get into a, an actual uh, bachelor of science nursing program. Okay, so so students who are interested in pursuing a, a, a nursing career and come to Whittier can earn a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science in any major and then get an, a second Bachelor of Science in Nursing, right? Yeah, so, so, so at and, Whittier, we would give go them to, a Bachelor of Arts uh -huh. degree and then they would apply to the nursing program. And that's what the, how they would get in. So because they already come with a degree, the, they're, they're not gonna be there for four years. Um, a lot of schools have already, um, they will accept a lot of those, uh, you know, courses that they've already taken mm -hmm. and um, and they get in that way. So it's it's an accelerate. I know of some programs and depends on what school, or I, I use San Diego State as an example, but there's a lot of other programs that have ways or mechanisms to um, to accelerate the program. So sometimes it'll take them like a year and a half. Um, mm -hmm. Some, I know that there's one that takes, um, or I've heard of one student of mine that got in uh, one year in, in one summer, you know. Um, it was a very intense year for them, but they were able to get the whole thing done okay. you know, during that time. Okay. So yes. Cool. Cool, thank you for that. I learned something today. Um, does anybody have a, any questions? Because we'll keep talking, but we do we do want to hear from you. Um, while you while you type something in the chat or raise your hand, um, Professor Valenzuela, tell us how many students usually enroll or participate in the pre health track, um, and then how many go on to to medical school or to their um, professional program of choice? Oh, that's a great question. So the, the truth is that a lot of students start off being very interested in pre-health. And, um, and it, it, you know, it's a, it's a challenging major, right? Anywhere you go, um, I mean, you have to take a lot of chemistry, a lot of biology, um, math, and physics, um, if you want to go into the pre-health, pre-med route, right? Um, either MD degree or DO degree, right? But um, 
So even even in nursing, right? You still require a lot of that chemistry. You still require some a lot of that math, you know, and 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 all these other uh, degrees, PT, uh, PA, you know, all of dentistry, veterinary. Um, veterinary is surprisingly almost identical to medical school requirements, right? So um, and same with dentistry, right? So so a lot of students take start taking these classes and then they start realizing, oh, I'm not so sure about this anymore. Um, and that's quite all right. You know, everybody changes their mind. Um, so we've had a lot of students that start off very interested in going to the medical route, and then they switch to either graduate programs, either a master's degree or a PhD degree um, and or a PT uh, or PA, you know, so they or they go from, you know, like that one student that I, I mentioned that went to master's program with John Hopkins, she actually started off as a pre-med. And then decided that that was not her route. She wanted to interact more with the patients. And it wasn't that necessarily that she found the courses challenging. It was more that she didn't feel like she was going to be interacting with the patients as much as nurses do. So um, so she switched majors because of that. And and you know, her she was doing very good in school, and that's why she got into such a prestigious school, right? Now, um, so everybody's got to have their reasons. Um, um, some people, when we have an excellent shadowing program here at Whittier, so we help students get into hospitals to get experience, and they experience that, and they may be in their junior year, and then they realize, oh, no, I can't do this. It's It was too gross, what I saw last night, and I don't want to see that ever again. Um, and it's like, I'm going a different route. I'm going to maybe get my master's degree or PhD degree. And um, so we have a lot of students that, that switch that way. Uh, I've had countless students that will have, you know, after experiencing it, they either one of two things, they either love it or they hate it. And those that love it um, have gone on to medical school. Um, so these last few years have been particularly challenging because of COVID. Um, when um, COVID hit, um, a lot of the schools panicked, medical schools panicked because the, the number of applicants just crashed. Um, because students were not getting the shadowing experience, students were not doing the volunteer work, they were not taking the time to study for the MCAT. Um, so it was kind of like an overall collapse and uh, schools were very concerned. And for a short period of time, actually, they decided to lower the standards. So one of the things that I do is I take part in, um, in these uh, conferences where they teach us or they tell us what, what it's the thought process in these medical schools, right? What are they thinking? And they told us um, that they were going to um, not require, for example, for one year period, it's already over guys, so don't don't get too excited about this, uh, any shadowing experience or volunteer work. They just said, we're gonna just limit everything based on your grade and your MCAT scores. And whatever you have before or done before, it was great, um, but they were not gonna necessarily require it. So, um, so I get information such as this constantly so i attend these conferences to know what's going on like or find out what exactly they're looking in the personal statements right um and uh, and and you know and uh for those students that are going to get in so so bottom line is that every year we have a uh, different amount of students that actually apply and 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 go on to medical school or nursing school or pt school so for example um in 2020 we i believe we had uh we started maybe with eight or no, 20 students that year that wanted to be pre-health. And after two years, it was down to eight and all eight. <laughs> yeah. And then all eight uh, applied and five of them got in, you know, so um, that was uh, 2020. Um, and and also in 2021 was a, more or less about the same number. So, but it was actually a little bit less in terms of students that actually started and those who actually applied. But from once they get to the point of applying, we usually have a pretty good success rate because um, you know, if we have uh, seven students applying and five of them getting in, those are like normal numbers for us. Um, and, um, but we also, uh, and, and those students that, that kind of like fell off the bandwagon, it's not like they just didn't do anything after that. Um, for example, one of them, which actually was a student of mine was very interesting going to medical school. He decided to go into a PhD program and he's at USC right now, finishing up his PhD program. And then I have another student um, who decided that that um, he was not interested in going to medical school and now he's getting his PhD at UCLA. 
So uh, they go on to do, because they've already filled a lot of these requirements and they've taken a lot of these courses. Um, they go on to do other things that are also very successful and, and very neat in their own right, right? Very cool, so, very cool. So we, yeah, we do have a lot of students, um, We quite a bit of students get into a master's program. Um, that's, that's like, a, we're very, very good about that. Um, but we've had students um, this last year, uh, we had, um, so far this year, actually, we've had two students get into medical school so far. They got in, one of them got into two medical schools, but I think he's going to, let me see if I have my notes here. Uh, one is going to TCU. And the other one is going to Alabama College of Osteopathic Medical School. And both of them are waitlisted in, in other schools and they're still waiting to hear if they're, you know, may get accepted somewhere else. But the one that's going to Alabama College also got a waitlisted for UCI, their um, medical program. And the other one um, is actually one of our more, you know, accomplished students because um, he's uh, waitlisted for UCSD and is waiting still to hear from UCSF and also from Harvard. And we haven't had a student get into Harvard for a while now, but we have had students get into Harvard in the past. So um, um, I, I would say that also, but in 2020, we, I had another student that got into an MD PhD program, um, which in my opinion is probably one of the hardest programs to get mm. into. That's the creme of the crop. You know, you can't get any harder than that. So you're, he's gonna be finishing his PhD and MD, you know, at the same place. So um, there's a lot of advantage of, of getting those multiple degrees like that, because um, I don't know if you guys know, but those are, the, he, he's got a full ride. You know, it doesn't matter it, who you, you know, your background, financial needs or anything like that. If you get into one of those programs, the school pays for the whole thing. So think about that. You're getting two degrees, two doctorate degrees for free. So this is why they're so competitive, because if you can get in, the school will pay for the whole thing. Um, and that amazing. is something that not a lot of people know about, but that's true for all schools in the United States. MD, PhD is a full ride that's free. All right, so we're gonna get an MD, PhD from this pool, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Someone in this group is gonna be an MD, PhD. Um, awesome, we, we, and does anybody have any questions? We wanna make sure that, um, you know, your questions are, are answered and that it's not just us. Great, yes, no, those are great questions. Okay, so um, in terms of research experience, yes, we do. We have actually fellowships on campus. So students can do research during the summer and during the school year with faculty members. So um, for example, this summer, I already have two students that are gonna be doing research with me. Um, so they apply for a fellowship and these are our fellowships that will pay the student. Um, I think this one pays $5,000 to the student for um, two months of work. So um, so they there are, and then there's also additional money for a little bit of the research components that, that we're gonna be, the consumables that we're gonna be using um, to do the experiments in the laboratory. Um, so students that are interested in doing research, they usually approach faculty members and they ask um, if, you're, if they're doing research over the summer and basically everybody is, and then if they can join their laboratory and or they want to develop their own projects or something that may be interesting to you. So um, so this is one set of opportunities that happen on campus. So we have, uh, again, different fellowships that, um, that were awarded to Whittier that pay for students to do research during the school year or primarily during the summer as well. Now, there's other opportunities that we help students in terms of doing research, REUs, which um, entail doing research at a major institution or national laboratory. Um, so we um, do have a person that's dedicated here to help um, those students get into those type of programs. And, and we help them a lot. I, I usually will end up reading personal statements and, and helping them with, um, with some of the, um, the, the letter writing as well, um, because all students are required um, to have letters of recommendation. So, um, so we have things going on, on on campus and off campus for research. Um, in terms of uh, getting volunteer work or shadowing, I would just say that shadowing is by far the most important experience that you can have. Um, more important than doing research, more important than anything um, in terms of getting into a pre-health program. Okay, so 
what that means is that um, you have to shadow a professional and be there firsthand to see how they interact with the patient. And there's nothing more, more uh, valuable than seeing that interaction because that's what you're going to be doing, right? That's going to be your job. So um, getting that experience, that shadowing experience is by far very critical. So we teach students and we help them in terms of what they need to be doing. You know, like I always tell students, keep a journal, you know, you're going to be writing a personal statement later on about your experience. So you want to have everything recorded and then saying, you know, how you witnessed the interaction and, and, you know, what impressed you? Um, um, did you feel that the, the patient uh, really got a lot out of it? Um, you know, those kind of interactions so that you can learn from it. The main thing is that you are learning from it and then you're realizing also if this is something that you really want to do for the rest of your life, right? Um, so again, shadowing is probably the most important experience. So in terms of placing, um, you know, we have a dedicated person. Um, her name is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Sanchez, and she will help you get into the shadowing program. So we have hospitals, um, different um, um, uh, individuals that are in the pre-health that have their own clinics um, that where we place students into. So, um, and that's usually a, a very big hurdle for students, right? And you're like, how the heck do I get this experience? Um, we help you. That's the bottom line. We help you get into these places. And that way, um, you know, it, it's not um, a strange or very challenging to go into some of these clinic and, and or hospital and shadow a nurse, shadow a doctor, shadow a dentist. Um, we get a lot of experiences, a positive experiences from our students that way. Okay, love it, love it. Any other questions from our audience? My advice for incoming freshmen is the first semester in particular, right? Focus on your classes. You want to do as good as possible your first semester, in particular your first semester, and maybe, you know, obviously every, every semester, all the classes, but pay particular attention to your first semester and also maybe your second semester. And this is why. Because a lot of those shadowing opportunities or even research opportunities or even fellowship opportunities are going to be happening during the summer or in the spring semester. So when you apply to these opportunities, and this is true for any school that you go to, right? And But particularly important with us at Whittier is that when you apply, one of the questions that's always going to be involved is how did you do your first semester, right? Did you get A's? Did you get B's? Did you get C's? You know, And you're going to be competing with other students. So it becomes particularly important that you um, do as well as you can your first semester so that when you apply, they look at your grades and like, oh, gr very good grades, very good personal statement, very good letters of recommendation. Okay, you got it. You know, that's how you're going to be getting those things. So my my advice is always that I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you have very ambitious and you already want to start on day one, but focus on that first. Um, and then the next thing that you should be focusing on is um, in terms of fellowships, for example, you mentioned fellowships. Um, you, the, the, a lot of those fellowships are going to be happening or, or have requirements as into whether you're a sophomore or, or a junior or a, a senior. Um, seniors is a little bit more rare, um, but we do have um, a few uh, fellowships that accept seniors. But depending on what level, what grade, um, what year you're in, um, you're going to be applying to different fellowships. So a lot of the fellowships are for the first, you can apply to um, during the first three years. But if you're a freshman, it's usually going to be close to the summer. Um, so the fe fellowships, you know, like right now, um, a lot of students are applying um, right now. This this month actually is the, the last month to start looking into some of these applications. So um, so it's, it's usually in the spring when you apply and then you you hear word towards the end of spring and then you plan for the summer. Um, and same thing with the shadowing. Um, so you have to be very flexible and uh, it's kind of hard to be flexible when you're in classes, right? Um, so we design it in such a way that um, it's not gonna really interfere with your classes and that way um, you're more likely to be very successful. But, but come and talk to us right away um, because it's better to be planning ahead and knowing when these deadlines are because every fellowship has their own 
separate requirements and also a lot of the um, the shadowing. So you start putting your foot in the door and you start applying to these things or looking into these things, talking to Elizabeth, for example, and then um, planning your personal statement um, and be ready for when the deadline comes around or the application process opens up that you just jump right in. I always aim the following way with this. Every time I meet with students, I aim to make sure that the student is going to be as successful as possible. Okay, that's my goal. Um, so, and the way that I go about approaching this is I look at your strengths and weaknesses. And we have a we have to have a frank um, discussion, right? To see, make sure that you're gonna do well all, all, all four years that you're here uh, or all two years or whichever amount of times that you, you have planned. Because if you get here and you take a lot of science courses at the very beginning and you burn out and you um, don't do as well, um, that's not gonna help you get to where you wanna get to after four years, right? So I will spread out the course workload. I will um, you know, plan out when you should be, to, or even sometimes you know, plan out oh, when you should be doing things in the summer so that it don't, they don't interfere during the school year. Um, I will plan all those things out so that you increase the odds of being as successful as possible because when you apply, they're gonna look at the entire package. They're gonna see what you did, when you did it, um, um, you know, and did you do the shadowing? Did you do the research? Did you do the, you know, did you do well in the classes? Um, did you involve in extracurricular activities? Um, did, did you do anything that demonstrated leadership? Any of those things, you know, they, they're, they wanna see your, your entire package and see how well you are as a candidate. So um, my goal is to make sure that you are as strong as possible at any time. So I, I really need to interact more with my students and any student and, and then figure them out and then discuss with them how we're going to approach this. Um, and that's my goal, making sure that you are successful as possible. All right. Well, I think that's, I think that's it. Um, any closing thoughts, Professor, um, before we, we hop out of here? Well, um, I want to welcome all of you <laughs> to Whittier. For those of you who have already been accepted, um, I want to welcome you. I look forward to meeting all of you guys in person. Um, I'm in my office almost all the time. If I'm not in my class, I have my schedule printed out. Um, we all do, as a matter of fact, our schedules and basically tells you where we're at, um, either in the laboratory or in the class. Um, but I, I look forward to meeting all of you. Go, please stop by my office, um, introduce yourself. It's very important to know your professors, obviously. Um, and it's very important for us to know you as well. And, um, and I just want to, you know, leave you with a thought that we are all looking forward to meeting you guys.